Hey guys, welcome back to my books build life channel. So I'm going to admit guys, this is the fourth time I'm filming this video. <laughs> And I really need to finish it because I want to play Stardew Valley. <laughs> Anyways, I'm really excited to bring you guys my January wrap up. As you can see, I'm in my home, in my room, really cozy. So let's get ready to talk about these books. The first thing I'm going to say though is I'm not going to elaborate on books that I didn't like that much. Um, just because like... I don't see the point of it. There is one book that I totally disliked that will have a more in-depth video later just because I feel like I need to share that with other people so other people don't experience the same thing that I experienced while I was reading that book and I will address that later. So mainly I will just mention them in passing because I did read 14 books. I don't want this video to be super long. Um, so I'll elaborate on the good ones, leave the other ones to the side a little bit and then yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it. So the first book that I read this month was Normal and Extraordinary Journey by Magdalena Newman and Nathaniel Newman. And this was a story about a boy with a craniofacial condition. Um, the story would be like the boy in the movie Wonder. And it talks about, it's actually the book is the boy who inspired the movie. Um, and it has a dual POV from the mom's point of view, the son's point of view. And we get to see... Um, the story of the parents and the challenge that they had and the story of the son and how he went through it and how he experienced it. I really love this book because he was so powerful and he even went to see the movie and he said, I'm not the boy on the TV and I'm okay with that um, because he doesn't, he didn't see himself like that. He didn't see himself different. He didn't see his face like something that people shouldn't look at or were afraid to look at. And that was powerful in and of itself. I loved reading about him learning how to breathe, learning how to listen, or I mean, learning how to hear, um, which was super awesome. The one thing that I did discount to this book is that it has these weird flashbacks in the middle that really did nothing for the story. Um, and they really actually took you out of how in-depth you were into their lives. Um, so I did give this book a three just because of that particular aspect. But overall, I really enjoyed the book. Book number two that I read was... The Memory Thief by Lauren Mancy. So The Memory Thief is a fantasy book. It basically tells a story of a girl who lives in a world where memories are a currency. There are people who could steal it. Um, I really enjoyed this book. It was a five-star read. Um, honestly, if I can give you an example, the most heartbreaking thing I read in this book was that like these grandparents sold so many of their memories to pay for rent that they forgot who their granddaughter was and she became an orphan because they refused to believe that she was related to them and I just I it's still hurting me um I gave this book five stars and then was actually shocked when I went on Goodreads to find out what genre this book was to put it into my journal and people dnf'd this book like nobody else some people didn't enjoy it at all and I was like did we read the same book because I loved it um so yeah a lot of people thought there was a lot of info dumping i personally this was one of the first books i ever annotated so maybe because i took notes and wrote down everything that i had questions about and things like that um it made it a little bit more pleasant and a little bit easier to get through if you decide to read the memory thief have a notebook have a piece of paper or a note or yeah a piece of paper and a pen is what i meant to say and um also, the back of the book has a glossary where they describe the kingdoms, characters, powers. So if you feel like you don't like info dumping, which I absolutely hate, then start from the back, learn all about it. And then when you feel comfortable with that, you can go to the beginning of the book and take a read. So I really enjoyed it. The Memory Thief by Lauren Mansey. Book number three was Sensational by Jodi Zadrock. Guys, I'm still crying over the fact that I didn't like this book as much as I wanted to. This is the second part of the duology, which would be spectacle and sensational. And it was really underwhelming. And this is the main reason. This book tells a story of a morgue reporter who's a woman. And in the first book, she's actually not allowed to be a morgue reporter because she is a woman. So she dresses up as a man. Holy hell. 
powerful feminist kicking ass yes but in the second book they reduce her to this caricature of a woman really where she spends most of the story pining over this man who's taken because he's engaged while she also has a partner that she's completely happy with and like i swear every at least every two or three pieces of dialogue she's pining over this man and she's like oh if we could be together oh if you didn't have a partner oh how nice would that be and let's just say that in the process a lot of weird moves were made to make those two end up together that were just did nothing for the story and I just couldn't get into it and it was so unfortunate because I love Spectacle I love the author and it just really broke my heart that I didn't love it and I gave it a two then book number four is Go With The Flow by Karen Schneeman and Lily Williams. Go With The Flow is a graphic novel all about periods. And all I gotta say is, buy your teenagers this book, your child this book, anybody, okay? Because this book is amazing. It addresses periods, it addresses how it's still taboo to talk about your period nowadays. Come on guys, we all get it. Women, non-binary people, trans men, it's a thing that happens. And I also like it because they address it like that in the book too. Periods apply to everybody who has a uterus regardless of how you identify. So this is very important and I love that this book put that out there um, because this is a big discussion in the community that needed to be addressed and I'm so glad it's here. They talk about the wage gap, they talk about choosing different menstruation products for yourself, they talk about the tax on those female products. I mean, this book is just loaded with information about how some periods are painful and some aren't and you need to find help and you need to find medical assistance if you are one of those people who's suffering. It tells girls that no two periods are the same. So even though your friends may last this long, yours doesn't necessarily have to last as long. Um, and if it's lasting too long, then maybe you also need to seek a physician. So just very informative graphic novel. It's actually quite sizable but i think it does a great job in illustration and context and just addresses some really important issues so go with the flow was also a five star then we have um alienate by dave womond this was a really cute story about an alien called nate and he came to the planet of earth to find pizza because it's his favorite and in the process of finding about pizza, he finds his love for books and education as he goes around to school with a little boy who finds him. And he learns that being educated and reading books means that you can have your own original thoughts. The reason this is important is because in his society, people have lost all their creativity because they ob obtain all their information from things that are fed to them and told to them nobody gets to actually do their own research or read a book or learn and this book is so powerful in the way because it starts like a simple alien that wants a pizza pizza and ends up being social commentary on the fact that sometimes we are just okay with getting fed information and not actually looking up what's real and things like that this has caused problems in his planet because they cannot create anything original, including pizza. So they power up the spaceship with original thought and he goes back to space in order to teach his species that being educated and having original thoughts is the way their society wants to be. And that was just, what? So please get this book for your classrooms, for your kids, for your children, for your teenagers, and everybody in between, because what tried to be an innocent book ended up being really in depth. Uh, Alien Nate by Dave Wammond. Um, book number six is Astronauts, Women on the Final Frontier. So this one was cool because I think it'll really inspire a lot of girls and boys to be astronauts. Um, or not girls and boys, children teenagers um to be astronauts and just the book did three important things number one it really highlighted the fight that women had to put in to be able to be accepted into nasa to be able to be allowed to go into space women fought so hard and in the book they were very clear about that and they detailed it and it was amazing because i'd never heard about that 
Um, they never taught me that in school. So it was really cool to learn about it. Um, the second thing they did was they showed the whole process of becoming an astronaut from the very beginning to what you do after you become an astronaut in preparation to fly into your first space mission. Space mission? God, I can't speak English. Um, space mission. And that was super cool. And they also juxtapositioned um, the fact that Russia put women and female, like women in space first um, versus the United States and what the thoughts of Russian government were behind sending women to space and how they were very easily accepting about women going to space in the first place. Um, and the third thing that it did was that I feel if this book had been targeted at teenagers and had been written as a book and not an illustrated graphic novel, it really wouldn't have been as powerful just because a lot of this information is really detailed. And even as an adult, I like had to reread a couple pages to be like, oh, okay, this is what we're talking about. Um, so I feel like if I had had to consume this information as a book, I would have not liked it at all. So I really like that they chose to go with the illustrated version. Book number seven is Dominicana uh, by Angie Cruz. Uh, Dominicana by Angie Cruz tells a story about a 15 year old who's forced to marry a 32 year old in order to proceed to find a better future in the United States. And obviously that life is quite unhappy. Now, this is the book that I rated a one and the book that we will discuss later in a more elaborate review. Um, and I will tell you all my thoughts about it. So book number eight is called Poems Worth Saving by Abigail Deneverville. This poetry collection really touched me. Also, pause. I'm sorry if you can hear my dad watching TV because he watches TV so loud. <laughs> And I've told him a couple times that I'm like, I can hear you clearly and your room is all the way across the hallway. But anyways, so um, this collection of poetry really touched my soul. And I find that poetry that I can relate to closely or that makes me feel things is something that is really important to me. And I feel like every time I was reading a poem, I thought, oh, I've been through that. Oh, I felt that. Oh, wow, this is really talking to something that I couldn't express. And that meant a lot to me. So if you're looking for a poetry collection that's simple, short, and really touches your heart, I'd say Poems Were Saving by Abigail de Neverville. And I gave it four stars because yes. Book number nine is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amar El Motar and Max Gladstone. So before I talk to you about this book, I'm going to grab it because I need you to see it. Okay. So... This is How You Lose the Time War is my top read of January. And it's probably my top, at least one of my top reads of 2020. I can guarantee that. If this doesn't end up on my top list of 2020, I'll be freaking surprised. All right. This is an FF romance that tells a story about red and blue. They're both agents in a time war that technically cannot be won because um, one's in the future, one's in the past. And yeah. So this book look at the tabs all right a lot of tabs okay and the reason being is because this book touched my demisexual heart okay my whole self that's looking for deep ass connections in books this is it and the reason i read this book is because my girl scarlet on twitter was like girl you gotta go get it and she told our group about this book for days and then we were all like, okay, we're just gonna go read it. And then we all came back and we're like, why did you destroy us like this? So yeah, this this happened. Um, this book is written in letter format and they're in the middle of a war and I don't know how that led to romance, but it was just absolutely beautiful. Anyways, so yeah, if you're looking for something to cry over and fall in love with and love letters, then guys, this is how you lose the time war but it's gonna break your heart so it's actually this is how you get a broken heart but like yes so obviously it got a five star because hollow so yeah moving on <laughs> so book number 10 the lightning dreamer by margarita engle um takes place in cuba um right preceding the cuban independence um it tells a story about a girl named tula um and how she's really struggling in this society that she doesn't agree with. She doesn't agree with the fact that people have slaves. She doesn't agree with 
the fact that people are owned. She doesn't agree with the fact that women still marry for convenience instead of love. And she's also really mad that poetry is considered rebellion because she loves to write. She loves expressing her feelings in poetry and she's going to do it anyway, regardless of like she could end up in jail for it. Um, some of her poetry contributed to the Cuban independence, which is why she's a very important woman in Cuba's history. Um, and I love that the author wrote the story from multiple different points of view. It was written in poetry, like in verse format, and just like seeing poems from every person that she dealt with in life really gave depth to Tula as a character. And I just really, really enjoyed reading that book. Like, I thought I was having a conversation with Tula um, because some of the things that she's struggling with right now, or struggling within the book, not right now, struggling within the book because the book takes place in like 1827, um, are still things that women are struggling with today. And I was like, in my notes that I was writing on the book, I was like, how are we going to deal with this? How did we get here? How do we make it stop? And it was just really um, engaging for me. And it felt like having a discussion with a book, which I say it's always a good thing. Um, the Lightning Dreamer by Margarita Engel. Then we have book 11, The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. So this is a classic author in Spanish that I've been wanting to read for a while. But as I've mentioned in other videos, my reading comprehension for Spanish books has a limit and Paulo Coelho's books is it. So I've never been able to read the book in Spanish. I do know the English version of The Alchemist exists, um, but I've been told that it's very metaphorical, it's very romantic, it's very elaborate, and I also have no reading comprehension for that kind of book either. I can't get into it and I don't understand them, so I didn't want to read that. So I was waiting for the graphic novel to The Alchemist to come out, and it did, yes, and I read it. I honestly don't have words for what the book made me feel, but it basically talks about a personal legend and how we all have our personal legends and we stop believing in it as we grow up. And the reason being is because we start doing what other people think we should be doing and we stop believing in ourselves. We start comparing our success to others. We stop believing in the fact that we can make things happen if we want them to. Um, and this was very, it, this hit me hard. Oh my God, I can hear the TV. Um, this hit me really hard because like there are points in my life where I've tried to move faster or gotten disappointed in myself because I'm not succeeding as fast as someone else. Um, and it really, it really touched me. And it's really a book about believing in you, believing in the world, believing in humanity. And it just, it really got to me. I don't know if it would get to somebody else, but like just the fact that like it was all about believing really hit me and I think it's one of those reads that I'll hold forever in my heart um so yes Paulo Coelho The Alchemist I really out here I gave it four stars book number 12 is called The Girl Who Married a Skull and Other African Stories I'm gonna share this book with you right here I'm gonna put the cover over here so it's a little bit clearer but this book I was walking through my library and First of all, I saw a black girl on the cover and I was like, well, I don't see that often. So I'm like, let me grab it. And also African stories. I don't feel like I read a lot of African stories and legends um, just because like I don't see the books. Um, so I was like, yo, this is going to be like a great introduction to African legends and stories from different parts of Africa. And I was like, yes, I want to read it. So I did. And I read it. This was the first book I read from my library hall. And um I really enjoyed it and basically it was a collection of illustrators who came together and they each picked one African legend to illustrate and then they put it into this one book all together and basically it had stories ranging from why thunder and lightning are the way they are, why spiders have eight legs, how a girl ended up married to a skull because of vanity, um, it had a story about gratitude, um, a story about wisdom. It's just like all these things that try to explain why the world was the way it was. And it was just powerful in the way they were illustrated. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was almost like reading African fairy tales and I was so down for it. So The Girl Who Married a Skull and Other African Stories. It's a nice read. It's a quick read and really teaches you a lot of lessons. So I suggest it for any adult and also any teenager child that wants to read something illustrated. 
and educate themselves. Some of the stories take place in Nigeria, Zimbabwe, West Africa, and I absolutely loved it. So that one. Book number 13 was Photographic, The Life of Graciela Iturbide. This was by Isabel Quintero. And this book was so great because it told the story of Graciela, which was a Mexican woman who lived, or she was from, she is, because she's still alive, from a privileged family. Um, and basically, there had these expectations of her and she couldn't kind of eschew those expectations. So she went through them, she got married, she had kids. And then after that, she said, I'm going on, I'm gonna do my own thing. So she went, she went to school, she picked up her camera, she became a photographer, she photographed her country and shared those photos with everyone to show people what her country, Mexico, was made of. And friends, this is one of the most impactful books I've read and I'm gonna explain why. Not only was it super like romantic and metaphoric, which meant I had to read it a couple times, but I still loved it. It was worth it, worth the effort, because it really showed and teaches you about other states and cities in Mexico, what their cultures are like, what kind of people live there, and why all of these cultures are so important to the fabric of what Mexico is. And this kind of book is so important to put in the hands of young people because the only image that we get of Mexico right now in the media is immigration and violence and gangs. And it's like, how can a country be reduced to just their problems? Mexico is such a culturally diverse place and we never get to learn about it. There were so many cities that I never even heard of. There's a city that I really love learning about it called Juchitan, where basically mujeres, um, which are non-binary people have been accepted there for centuries. It's a non, it's a, it's a, it's a city that has no gender binary. So everybody's free to be who they are. And I was like, in a country where machismo is like a big thing, that's impressive, but we never learn about that and how different other places in Mexico can be. So I really just loved having an insight through her eyes about what Mexico truly is like. Um, so I definitely gave this book four or five stars I'm not sure but I it was a high rating because I loved it and I think it's so timely to share with others and the last book that I read that I totally tried to squeeze in before the end of January because it was so important so after the controversy of AD which I'm not going to talk about anymore because that book has had enough I wanted to read stories of immigration from Mexican authors um so or just immigration stories that were own voices or related to the actual migration crisis. Um, so I read Tell Me How It Ends by Valeria Luiseggi. Um, she was basically a Mexican woman who was living in the United States um, trying to acquire her green card um, to be a resident and she got called upon to work as a translator for the immigration courts for the immigration crisis of 2014 when Central American immigrants or specifically Central American immigrant children, were coming to the border seeking asylum and refuge. Um, and this book was so impactful because it bases itself of a 40 questions that they asked these kids um, in, the 40 questions that they asked these kids during their immigration interview. And it hurt me to see these 40 questions because these 40 questions really make the kid, the child, no matter how young or old they were, to relive the trauma that they had to go through to get to the United States. So it's basically like, give me your trauma in exchange for your maybe freedom. I'm not guaranteeing it, but like maybe. But here, give me all your trauma, give me all your hurt, and maybe I'll let you stay, which is like, these are children. Um, So that really hit home for me. Um. I also like the fact that the author explores those questions as an immigrant herself and how she feels about it and how she feels about her children and what if it had been her children that were going through this, could they take it, could they stand it, would they have even made it to the United States? Um, so that is very important. She also shares some of the stories, obviously with the changed names, but some of the stories that she translated, some of the stories that really stuck with her and she really explored and talked about how the United States is actually to blame in some part for this crisis and how the only way that we are going to succeed in finding a problem for this immigration issue is if all the countries involved, meaning the Northern Triangle and the USA, accept their blame and part 
in this crisis and how it began in the first place. Um, and it's just a great essay. And I feel like if you want to read something about the immigration crisis that's happening at the border, this is totally a book that you should get your hands on and read. It's only 114 pages. I gave it four stars. It was just awesome and something that will definitely educate you on some policies that I didn't even know the United States made um, in response to the immigration crisis with the Central American children that instead of helping them actually harm them and put them in peril. Um, so yeah, I was shook at some of the thoughts. So these are all the books that I read, 14 books total. I think I said 15 at the beginning of the video, but I only read 14. Um, I hope you found either a new book to read um, in this list that you enjoyed this video. If you've stayed this long, I really appreciate you watching my video. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, press the bell for notifications. And I think I'm a little blurry right now, but I am happy and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.